Hi everyone. Today in this video, let us discuss about the amino acids as precursors. Let us see how they are going to be involved in the biogenesis of the alkaloids within the plants. Amino acids acts as precursor for many of the alkaloids. For example, they are going to be involved in the biogenesis of important drugs like the atropine as well as pilocarpine, nicotine, ephedrine. In this way, so many types of drugs are going to be derived within the plants from the amino acids as the precursors. So today let us see the different types of amino acids and from which the alkaloids can be derived. First of all, let us start with the ornithine derived alkaloids. So this is the structure of the ornithine. Ornithine is a amino acid having an amine side chain. Now here two amine groups are there. This is the L-ornithine. And here this carboxylic acid is going to be removed from this ornithine and particularly in the biogenesis of the plants, the carbon chain is mainly included but carboxylic acid is going to be removed. So carboxylic acid is going to be removed from this ornithine and here you can observe another amino group is present at the terminal which is also going to be removed. Then the ring can be closed in this way. So when the ring is going to be closed in this way, it can form a five member ring system with one nitrogen and completely saturated. That is nothing but the pyrrolidine. So ornithine by removal of this carboxylic acid, that means the decarboxylation and by removal of the amino group, it produces the pyrrolidine nucleus. This pyrrolidine can further undergo modifications in order to produce the other types of alkaloids. Now here the ring can be extended in such a way that new bonds are going to be formed in this way. Now when the bonds are formed in this way, it produces a bicyclic structure and it is going to form a nucleus like this. And what is the name of this nucleus? This nucleus is present in the well-known drugs. This is the propane nucleus. In this way, ornithine is converted into pyrrolidine and pyrrolidine is going to be modified to produce the tropane alkaloids. So what are the tropane alkaloids? The important tropane alkaloid is having the structure like this. And what is the name of this structure? This is uh, having a large structure with the pyrrolidine derived uh, ring system. And this is nothing but the hyoscyamine. You can see here this hyoscyamine is an ester that is going to be made up of one alcohol and another carboxylic acid. Here the name of the alcohol is called as tropanol. So tropanol is made up of the pyrrolidine nucleus which is then modified to produce the tropane nucleus. So tropane which is having an alcohol part at the third carbon is called as tropanol. So hyoscyamine is an ester that is formed from the tropanol and what is the acid part? The acid is called as tropic acid. This tropic acid is coming from the phenylalanine. You can easily observe it is in the phenyl and ethyl group is there. So this part is coming from the phenylalanine. In this way, tropane alkaloids are derived from the two types of amino acids. One is the ornithine and second is the phenylalanine. And here the tropic acid is nothing but the 3 hydroxy 2 phenyl propanoic acid. This hyoscyamine is the important component in the tropane alkaloids. And here you can observe that this hyoscyamine is optically active. We can observe a chiral carbon here and because of this chiral carbon, now hyoscyamine is optically active. It can exist as L as well as D isomer, levoform and dextroform. But levoform is 20 times more active than the dextroform. So within the plants, hyoscyamine mainly exists as L hyoscyamine. But at the same time, this hyoscyamine can be easily racemized such that it is going to produce the one of the racemic mixture atropine. So atropine is a racemic mixture of the hyoscyamine. So hyoscyamine is optically active but atropine is not optically active because it is a racemic mixture of the hyoscyamine. That means it is having the 50% L-hyoscyamine and 50% D-hyoscyamine. And atropine is one of the important drug that acts as an anticholinergic. And it's a non-selective anticholinergic. It acts on, it blocks the, all the muscanic receptors. This drug can be used as an antispasmodic as well as to treat the sinus bradycardia. And it is also used as a pre-anastic in order to dry the secretions. Similarly, another tropane alkaloid is the scopolamine. Scopolamine is also called as hyoscine. And it is having the similar structure to the atropine with a small modification. What is that modification? Here you can see that at 7th and 8th carbon, it is having an epoxide bridge. So this epoxide bridge is an extra moiety within the scopolamine and scopolamine is a again a tropane alkaloid having the pyrrolidine nucleus. And both in the atropine as well as scopolamine, this pyrrolidine nucleus is somewhat modified to produce a bicyclic ring system and this bicyclic ring system is called as 
pyrrolidine piperidine ring system so this is a pyrrolidine piperidine ring system bridged by n methyl group just like the hyoscyamine and atropine scopolamine is also forming an ester here and on hydrolysis it gives the two components one is the scopine and another one is the tropic acid so atropine gives the tropanol and tropic acid whereas scopolamine gives the scopine and tropic acid the acid part is same but the alcohol part is different scopolamine is also called as hyoscine which is used to treat the motion sickness it hyoscine acts as an antiemetic therefore it can be used in the treatment of motion sickness next one is the lysine derived alkaloids so this is the structure of the lysine now you can see that lysine is having the six carbon chain along with one amino group at the terminal ornithine is having the five carbon chain but lysine is having the six carbon chain and just like the ornithine here again the carboxylic acid group is going to be removed along with removal of the another amino group at the terminal so that the ring is going to be closed and it is going to produce a six member ring system with uh, nitrogen and now this six member ring system with nitrogen and completely saturated is nothing but the piperidine ring system so this lysine gives the piperidine alkaloids so here we can easily remember that ornithine gives the five member nitrogen containing ring system whereas lysine gives the six member nitrogen containing ring system so ornithine produce the pyrrolidine nucleus and lysine produce the piperidine nucleus so one of the important alkaloids derived from the lysine are the lobelia alkaloids lobelia alkaloids are having the piperidine ring system and this is one of the important component in the lobelia alkaloids that is the lobelin lobelin is having the piperidine ring system you can see here n methyl piperidine ring system and similarly one of the oxidized form is the lobelanin lobelanin is having similar structure with a keto group so lobelin is having the oh group here whereas lobelanin is having the ketone group here both of these structures are having the piperidine ring system so they are derived from the lysine and lobelia is particularly used as a respiratory stimulant second one arica alkaloids arica alkaloids are also having the piperidine nucleus somewhat modified and here this is one of the example this is the aricoline this aricoline is having the piperidine ring system with one double bond and similarly second one is the aricidine aricidine is having the similar structure except it is having a free carboxylic acid in the aricoline it is present as an ester but in the aricidine it is present as a free carboxylic acid so on hydrolysis aricoline can give the aricidine similarly guacoline guacoline is having the similar structure to the aricoline but it's not but it is not having the methyl group on the nitrogen of the piperidine ring system so guacoline is somewhat related to the aricoline and it can give the another component that is a guacine which is again obtained from the hydrolysis from the guacoline now this guacine is having the free carboxylic acid in this way aricoline and aricidine are having the n methyl components and guacoline and guacine are not having the methyl group on the nitrogen again these arica alkaloids are mainly used as respiratory stimulants next one is the ornithine and nicotinic acid derived alkaloids in few of the plants both ornithine as well as nicotinic acid can act as the precursors so this is the structure of the nicotinic acid now this nicotinic acid is having the nicotine three carboxylic acid and again here this carboxylic acid group can be removed such that it is going to produce the pyridine nucleus so nicotinic acid acts as a precursor for the pyridine if the pyridine is completely saturated it becomes the piperidine and here you have to remember that pyridine is derived from the nicotinic acid whereas piperidine is derived from the lysine now this is the structure of the nicotine and here the nicotine is having the pyridine ring system which is coming from the nicotinic acid and it is having the five membered pyrrolidine ring system which is coming from the ornithine nicotine acts as a cna stimulant and it acts as an agonist on the nicotinic acetylcholine receptors next one is the histidine derived alkaloids so this is the structure of the histidine histidine is a heterocyclic amino acid now this histidine can combine with the another amino acid so this amino acid is having the r group so based on the r group it may be either threonine or phenylalanine and here from the histidine this carboxylic acid is going to be removed when the carboxylic acid is going to be removed from the histidine it gives the histamine and along with this uh, amino group is also going to be removed and after removal of this amino group it is going to be fused with the either threonine and phenylalanine such that it is going to form a nucleus like this now here it is having the imidazole nucleus which is attached with a furanone ring system with a methyl bridge and this furanone ring is obtained from the threonine or phenylalanine 
Now the imidazole containing alkaloids are the pylocarpus alkaloids. So one of the drug is the pylocarpine. You can see that in the pylocarpine imidazole nucleus is there which is attached with the furanone ring system by methyl bridge. And pylocarpine is one of a muscanic agonist which produce the decrease in the intraocular pressure. So this drug can be used in the treatment of glaucoma. So pylocarpine is available as eye drops in order to treat the glaucoma. But within the plants, this pylocarpine can also exist as isopylocarpine, iso which is the isomer of the pylocarpine. Next one is the phenylalanine derived alkaloids. So this is the structure of the phenylalanine and it can be modified such that it can give one type of alkaloids. But here the carboxylic acid group is not removed and amine group is not removed. The entire phenylalanine is going to be incorporated within the structure of the alkaloid. So such type of alkaloids where the entire ring system is going to be included and the nitrogen is outside the ring, they are called as protoalkaloids. So from the phenylalanine, one of the alkaloids that is coming is the ephedrine. You can see here the phenylalanine structure is as it is. And apart from this phenylalanine, OH group is going to be attached on the side chain and uh, amine group is come to NHCH3 and one more methyl group is attached at the alpha position. In this way phenylalanine can be come to ephedrine within the ephedra species. And ephedrine acts as a mixed acting sympathomimetic that means it acts both directly as well as indirectly. It increases the adrenergic transmission by acting on the adrenergic receptors as well as it also increases the release of the norepinephrine from the storage vesicles. In this way ephedrine increases the sympathetic transmission and it can produce a bronchodilatation as well as it can increase the cardiac contraction and because it produces the tachycardia as main side effect nowadays ephedrine is very less preferred as a bronchodilator and its isomer is the pseudoephedrine which is used as a nasal decongestant. Next one is the anthranilic acid derivatives. Anthranilic acid acts as an intermediate in the sense of the tryptophan. Tryptophan is one of the amino acid. And this anthranic acid can combine with the another nucleus which is derived from the ornithine. We have already discussed that ornithine can give the 5-membered nitrogen containing ring system. Now this anthranic acid can combine with this 5-membered nitrogen containing ring system such that it is going to give the quinazoline nucleus. Now this quinazoline nucleus is on a 6 plus 6 member ring system with two nitrogens at first and third positions. So one of the alkaloids which are having the quinazoline nucleus is the Vasaka alkaloids. So this is the structure of the vasicin, which is having the quinazoline nucleus which is uh, fused with the pyrrolidine ring system and this is another one that it is the vasinone which is having a ketone group at the fourth portion of the quinazoline nucleus. So vasin and vasinone are the, having quinazoline nucleus and they are acting like expectorants. And apart from these amino acids in our previous video we already discussed the amino acids derived from the tyrosine and tryptophan. Tyrosine is going to produce the isoquinol alkaloids and tryptophan is going to produce the indole and quinoline alkaloids. In this way, amino acids acts as precursor for many of the alkaloids within the plants and these amino acids can be incorporated into the different ways to produce the various types of alkaloids which are therapeutically highly useful. So that's about the biogenes of alkaloids from the different types of amino acids. Hope you have enjoyed this video. If you like this video, please subscribe to our channel. Share this video with your friends, post your comments in the comment box. Thank you for watching this video.